anyway, thank you for uh, your uh, time for Tango Sex Blog. Uh, you're flying the FA-18. Uh, pardon me for saying, but you're looking young. How old are you? I'm 27 years old. 27. I'm like 26. So we're well. We were like uh, three years old when Top Gun uh, was out in '86. I guess that's true. Was that your prime mot motivation, like that movie? Like for like 90% of pilots was the. the Actually, yeah. for you. I always wanted to be a pilot growing up. Uh, I didn't really see Top Gun until uh, until I was much older. Uh, it's still a great movie, uh, great recruiting tool for the Navy. But uh, I always wanted to be a pilot, be involved in aviation, and uh, the Navy's a great way to do that. So. So are you, how much hours do you have on the FA-18? I have about 500 hours in the Super Hornet. Yeah, so can you tell, tell me something about the aircraft, like generally, uh, uh, let's like focus on how is it different than the older version of the FA-18 CND? Uh, some improvements were made, we added a couple stations to the, uh, to the Hornet so we have more ability to carry more ordnance, we have larger internal fuel capacity, the aircraft itself is actually about 35-40% larger. Than the, uh, than the Legacy Hornet, uh, which gives us a lot more capability for on-station time. We have more ability to uh, bring back ordnance to the ship, uh, which is uh, uh, kind of a limitation with the older Hornet, uh, based on weight that you can land on the aircraft carrier. Uh, and we have extended range and extended capabilities and improved avionics suite. Uh, those are some of the major improvements over the Legacy. As, as far as the weapon bring back capability, how, uh, uh, like, in percentages, how much ordnance can you can you return to the carrier with the E? Well, we can uh, we can pretty much carry back the standard combat load uh, from the uh, from the ship. We can uh, load up most of our stations and be able to bring it back uh, with an acceptable fuel state back to the ship. Uh, so that's uh, what the Navy is looking for. So, uh, so uh, uh, you're flying a single seater, right? That's correct. Uh, can you tell me something? It's your first uh, uh, airplane outside of training, right? That's correct. So how does it work for uh, a young pilot out of training to be qualified for uh, for tech landing? What, it, how much actual landing do you need with an instructor to be able to qualify to do it yourself? As part of the uh, as part of flight training, uh, when we fly the T-45, we get about four or five hundred practice carrier landings. They have uh, a carrier box painted on the runway uh, at the training facility, and they have a uh, the lens that we use to land, they have the lens there as well, and uh, they have the landing signal officers that stand on the side of the runway and grade your passes, and you do several hundred of those, uh, and you do it all either solo or uh, with another a student whizzo in the back seat as well, uh, when you go to uh, go to the boat uh, as part of the FRS. When we all first qualify, all those landings are solo, there's no instructor in the back seat, uh, it's just uh, all, your, all on your own the first time, so it, it gets pretty exciting. So when did you feel like comfortable landing on an aircraft carrier or do you ever? Comfortable is not a word that we use. Uh, comfortable and complacency, we stay away from those things. Every time you land on the boat, it's a different landing. And you got to take it seriously every time because uh, the boat's a dangerous, uh, dangerous environment to work around. Uh, so comfortable is never the right word. I mean, we get trained up and we get better at it. Uh, but uh, I would never say comfortable is the, uh, is the word to use. Now, uh, night carrier landings on an aircraft carrier, uh, they're like something like, I, I read once, the most fun you can have with your pants on. Is that true? I would say a night carrier landing is, uh, is one of the things we do. It's, uh, it's a great ability to be able to operate at night. And uh, a night landing is it's difficult in a lot of ways, especially if the weather's low or there's no moon out. But uh, it's just like any other approach. We, Fly your, uh, fly your numbers, fly the straight in, and uh, you just can't see very much. There's not a lot of cues out there. You just see the lens, you can see the runway center lights, and then just fly out the ball all the way to touchdown and stop. And, uh, it can get sporty sometimes, depending on uh, the weather and the conditions, but uh, it's, uh, it's part of what we do every day. When you're landing on a carrier, uh, I think that they're like uh, reporting if you miss a wire. And that is detrimental to your uh, flight state status, am I right? There, uh, there's four wires, and uh, we target the third wire in that row, and uh, the goal is to catch the third wire every time, and the landing signal officer is there to, first of all, to keep you safe, keep the airplane safe and the flight deck safe, and uh, uh, so we grade every pass, uh, because we're all type A competitive guys, and grading each pass keeps us honest, and gets us away from being comfortable and complacent, and uh, so uh, grades matter, it's important because it keeps you safe, but uh, there's not, uh, everyone, everyone misses a wire every now and then, we call it a boulder, and it happens, and uh, it's just part of the uh, realities of working.
working around the boat, and uh, guys will just, uh, you work through it, you come back in and uh, try it again. Uh, so it's not like a guy who has, uh, you know, misses once or twice every now and then is going to have any sort of issues. It happens to everybody. Uh, were you operational in combat? Do you have any operational combat missions? We are, uh, we're operating in the, uh, in the Middle East region now, in support of 5th Fleet, so uh, we're involved with uh, many of the operations and uh, uh, requirements in the area, so uh, we're uh, supporting fully the uh, U.S. mission in the region. And your carrier is? Uh, the USS Nimitz. Nimitz. Uh, same as Top Gun. Or was it? Oh, I don't, I don't know the carrier that's in there. Uh, this FA-18 has the new AACA radar, or, uh, or no? It does not. Uh, that's like in the uh, uh, process of introducing, or? Uh... Yeah, some of our Super Hornets have it. Some of them are being retrofitted and such, and uh, we just have uh, ours are a few years older, and uh, uh, they're, they're plugged for it, and eventually we expect a retrofit for it, but uh, we, we don't have it quite yet. And it's, all, uh, it's also uh, capable of carrying long range uh, uh, beyond the visual range of missiles, right? That's correct. Uh, you carry what? We carry the full complement of, uh, of U.S. weapons and missiles in our arsenal. So can the new F-18E be compared to the F-15E? Like, more capable, more... Uh I think they're very similar. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of brotherly competition between the Air Force and us, but uh, uh, we do different roles. I mean, they're a, a shore-based platform or a terror-based platform, and, and uh, one's Navy and one's Air Force. And uh, other than that, I mean, they're roughly comparable airplanes. And how do you say, uh, what do you say about the uh, awful news about they're thinking about introducing uh, UCAVs on the aircraft carriers? I mean, why? I think, uh, I think there's a role for both UAVs and manned aircraft, and uh, the Navy's trying to find that balance. I think they're doing a pretty good job of uh, figuring out uh, what roles we can do and where we can remove risk from uh, the pilot's life and, uh, in our mission. So uh, I think the Navy's working out a balance for that. And the final question is the uh, legendary rivalry between the Navy and the Air Force, like uh, fairy tale, or is it real? It's, uh, it's a friendly competition, like, uh, like any time. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. We work together all the time. We do joint exercises. Uh, we fly missions together all the time. So it's, it's just a friendly competition.